In this video, we're going to look at a new Selenium feature called Selenium Multi-Network. And that's a feature that enables you to connect a Kubernetes pod to multiple networks, which is a bit of a change because in you know, Kubernetes, the premise is that um, your pod is connected to a single flat network and is able to you know, talk to other pods in, in your cluster. Uh, but there might be some times where you have more granular requirements, advanced requirements, where you need to connect a pod to multiple networks, maybe for uh, multi-tenancy, maybe to for network segmentation, service chaining. We see a lot of use cases like this in the financial industry, in the telco space for things like virtual network function and service chaining. Um, and this wasn't really possible uh, using a CNI in the past. You needed an extra tool, maybe like Maltus, to be able to connect a pod to multiple interfaces. So being able to do it natively with Cilium is fantastic. And also because uh, it supports Cilium network policies from day one, right? so you can apply different security policies to your network interfaces. And you can also observe the traffic using Hubble, right? So you're able to operate the multi-network uh, feature as well. So uh, let's go into a demo. So in this demo, we're going to use one of our more recent labs, which is the iSovenet Enterprise for Cilium, Cilium Multi-Networking. This feature is only available in the Enterprise Edition of Cilium. Um, and you can go and find uh, these labs and all our other labs. We have about 25 or so on isovalent.com slash labs. Um, and, and try in, in your own time. I'm just going to go through the first step, show you how to uh, deploy a pod in multiple networks. If you go through the labs, you will see how we can apply security policies to the different network interfaces and how you can observe all the traffic using Hubble. Uh, but just to keep it uh, short enough for this lab, we're going to go and start with just deploying a pod in a couple of different networks. So in this lab, uh, I've got a Kubernetes cluster and it's got three nodes. As you can see, the nodes are now ready. Selium has just finished deploying. We're running 114.5 CEE, which is the enterprise version. Um, and everything is looking healthy. And we're just going to look at the uh, actual uh, configuration. So if you use Cilium config view, you can see the whole Cilium configuration. So we're just going to wrap uh, and filter on enable multi-network and we can see that feature has been enabled. Now, uh, Cilium is ready, the cluster is ready, the feature is enabled. Now, the first thing we need to do is deploy the networks and the pools of IP that the network interface uh, will, will pull their IP address from. So that's the next step. And, and for this, we'll be using something called multiple IPAM, uh, multiple IP address management. And that's a feature that came in in Cilium Open Source 114, which enable us to assign different IPs to uh, different pods now, typically in uh, Kubernetes, you, you get like a big flat uh, IP range, which is might be assigned to a cluster or even assigned to a node. And pods, regardless of the namespaces, you know, they will pick an IP address from that pool. Um, with multiple, we have more flexibility on how we assign IP addresses. Right? You can, for example, based on an annotation, say this pod will pick up an IP address from that pool. If this pod is part of that namespace, it will pick up an IP address from a different pool. Well, it just gives us a bit more flexibility and granularity on how we assign IP addresses to our pods. And we're going to need this once we have a pod with multiple network interfaces, so it can pick uh, an IP addresses from different uh, network pools. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first, you know, what happened during the lab boot up is that we automatically uh, created uh, a default po default pool of IP and a default network. Uh, the pool of IP will be 10.10.0.0 slash 16. And the mask size, as you can see, is 24. What this means is 
we'll take that 10.10 .10, uh, network, that slash 16, and we'll carve out smaller slash 24 prefixes and assign it to the different nodes, right? And then the more uh, IPs you need, the more uh, slash 24 you assign, right? So if you need more than 255, then we'll start adding, uh, you know, allocating another uh, prefix to the node. So it's just a, a dynamic way to allocate IP addresses based on demand um, and growth. So we've got our, our pool and we also have a default network, which is using that pool, as you can see. here, uh, And that default network is uh, again, using the uh, multiple IPA mode. And that's going to be uh, where one of our, um, you know, the default network for our pods, if we don't specify the annotation and the network it's supposed to join. And we'll see the annotation in the next step. So we got our first network and our first pool. Now we're going to create a second network and a second pool. Uh, we're going to call it a uh, Jupyter IP pool, and you can see it's based on the 192.168.16.0 slash 20 and a mask size of, of 27. Um, and now we're going to go and uh, deploy it. Uh, very, again, very similar. It's uh, we'll assign slash 27 to uh, the nodes as, uh, as required. And uh, we also have an iSurveillant pod network. So it's a CRD called iSurveillant pod network. Uh, that's our secondary network and it's relying on the Jupyter IP pool that we specified here. And note that we also have to specify the default gateway to know where to send the traffic to. Let's go and deploy it. And one last thing we need to do uh, before we deploy our pod and connect it to multiple networks is to make sure that uh, we disable masquerading. And masquerading is essentially um, when you have a pod in a specific node and traffic comes out, typically traffic will be source netted or masqueraded uh, and the source IP will be that of the node, right? Where the pod is located. Um, when you do multi-networking, we don't want to, uh, you know, change the source IP, we want that, that source IP to, to be maintained. So we have to disable masquerading for this specific IP. So to disable it, we use something called, um, well, a config map, a specific config map, which uh, was a specific config where you specify the, the, the network that you don't want to, uh, you know, apply masquerading to. Now, by default, we all, we, we're already disabling for the other uh, network, the default one, but we have to apply this masquerading um, for the secondary network. Um, so that's the first step. Uh, and now we, uh, you know, we're ready to go and deploy uh, a client. That client is going to, to be connected to the two networks we've created. And then we're going to create a server in the default network and another server in the Jupyter secondary network. So let's go ahead and deploy it. And now just, just have a quick look at the config here. So the thing to, to, to note here is uh, we're using this specific annotation. Um, and as you can see, it's called network, isovino.com slash pod networks. And we are, uh, using this to specify the network our pods should attach to. So the server default should be attached to the default network. The server Jupyter should be attached to the Jupyter network and the client pod should be attached to both, right? So uh, again, that's just a way to make sure, an easy way to assign the networks to our pods using the annotation. And then obviously Cilium will understand this and uh, assign it accordingly. Now, uh, if we do a kubectl uh, uh, get pods, you can see, you know, the server default has picked up an IP address from the default network. Server Jupyter has picked up an IP address from the secondary network. Uh, but the, for the client, we only see the primary address, which is which is expected in a way, um, because you know, if you do kubectl 
the community doesn't get the kind of awareness of uh, the fact that there might be multiple IP addresses, right? We only, this command will only show um, the first IP address for a particular pod. So what you do it is by looking at the Selenium endpoints, right? And, and Selenium, the endpoint is essentially um, a kind of a grouping of you know, containers that share the same IP address. Um, and here we're going to actually have two endpoints for the client, an endpoint for the 10.10.1.11, which is the, the primary interface, and an endpoint for the secondary interface. And an endpoint, as you can see, has a dash CIL.1 assigned to it. So that's how you can kind of verify that a, a pod has been assigned to IP addresses. Um, and you see the server default and the server Jupyter uh, also have an IP address. Now we can also go and log on to our uh, client and you can see there are two IP addresses, 10.10.1.2.11 and 1.2.1.6.8.16.40, right? So as a, it, it has done exactly what we hope it would, which is to attach our clients to two different networks. And now we're just going to verify connectivity. So first we need to extract the IP addresses of our server default and server Jupyter, which is here. And then we're just going to run some basic connectivity tests. We'll do a ping and we'll do a curl, something simple. Uh, so if we ping the client uh, to the server default, successful. And if we ping the client to the server Jupyter, again, they are successful. Now, these servers are, are like some kind of echo server. So when we do a curl to the servers, what we'll get in response is a source IP address. So this, um, uh, let's do clients. If we do a curl from the client to the server default, the server de default in response sends us the 10.10.1.211 IP address, which is the source IP of the client, right? If we do it to the Jupyter one, you see a different IP address, right? Again, it's because we've disabled masquerading and we see the IP, the IP address that we want in that kind of secondary network, which is a 192.168.16.14. So we're able from the client to connect to servers in different networks using our different network interfaces. Um, and if you carry on with the rest of the lab, you will see how we can use network policies, how we can use Hubble to observe all the traffic. And it explains things around identities and endpoints. Uh, I want to keep that demo short, but I will let you go ahead and, and look at the lab. You can also look at the isovenant 1514 uh, blog post where we explain this in more details. And again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one.